We congratulate you on being courageous enough to live outside your comfort zone for some of you. And for some of you, this is completely normal, yes? Yes. yes. But for some of you, this is odd and mysterious, yes? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. But we're here to remind you that this is very much a part of your eternal being. This is very much a part of your roots as a eternal being. That when you come into this experience, you relinquish certain memories of who you are and you become this physical being and you grow into the adults and in some cases children that you are based on the materialization and the crystallization of your energetic form. But you are moving into the new norm of being a human being, which is very much more in tune with your energetic self and understanding that you are not confined strictly to the senses that you were born and bred to believe is all that is part of who you are. Yes, is this making sense? Mm -hmm. yes. You are tapping into a higher vibration that is being brought about into the planet primarily by the younger generation that is coming into this experience as a human being, bringing with them a higher vibration so that all of you as adults are able to tap into that vibration should you choose to do so. And that's all it really is, is a choice. But there are things that you can do in your life that will enable you to create a, let's say, stronger connection and more alignment with the higher aspect of who you are through the choices that you make throughout your day. The food that you put into your body, the conversations that you choose to have, the friendships that you choose to forage, the relationships that you choose to let go of, the thoughts that you choose to think, the activities that you choose to do, the activities that you choose not to do, these all participate to one degree or another in how connected and how in tune you are with your divine self. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's that divine part of you that many of you on the planet are craving for. So when you come across those that feel as though they are lost and confused, or feel like they're missing something, <coughs> or feel like they've missed out on something, and they're there, and you all may be a part of that group as well. What you're <coughs> really looking for is yourself. Yes? How silly really is that? <coughs> when you break it down into logical terms, many of you are looking for yourself. And what we mean by that is you're looking for that part of you that is connected to the source from which you came, yes? So when you come into this experience and into this lifetime, based on the overall collective agreement, you are not remembering all that you are and part of the process is to remember that, which also is kind of silly, but it's kind of fun. Yes. Should you choose it to be fun? Every experience in life, you have a choice of how to respond to that experience, how to respond to that conversation, how to respond to that comment. And it's within that response that you are determining what kind of flow you are wanting to create in your life. And from a higher self, perspective, which is really what you're looking for, it's that part of you that resides outside of the physical body, that resides in energetic form, it's that part of you that sits on the mountaintop and sees everything before you, whereas your physical self can only see from a very narrow vantage point. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. yes. When you're craving for more, when you're looking for more, when you're feeling like there's more, what you're looking for is that connection to more, which is your higher self. Your higher self is always, always in your corner. Your higher self is your coach. Your higher self is your best friend. Your higher self is your confident. Your higher self is your angelic being that is always, always, always looking out for your best interest. What gets in the way? 
There you go. Yes. And the logical mind. And this isn't saying that the logical mind doesn't have its place. Of course it does. As a human being, you need to be able to think things through. You need to be able to calculate. You need to be able to analyze. You need to be able to formulate. Yes? Yes. But what comes before all those things is your soul. What comes before all those things is your spirit, which is meant to be your driving force, which is meant to be the captain, not the co-pilot. Yes? Yes. But what gets in the way for many is the confusion around who is guiding you. It's not the ego, it's not the logical thinking. Sometimes it is, but that's when you kind of find yourself faltering and going in directions that you wouldn't necessarily choose to go should you follow your intuitive self, your higher self, which is trying desperately in most cases to lead you in a more desirable direction, but logic gets in the way and you step back and say, mm, not for me today, because you come up with all sorts of excuses and reasons why not to or why you should, even though you know inside that it's not necessarily the choice that you would like to be making. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to develop a stronger sense of your intuition, to develop a stronger sense of what feeds your soul, of what feeds your spirit, what creates a higher understanding and a higher elevated vibration that then in turn creates a more meaningful and more purposeful and more conscious and more aware life that will then represent itself to you in something as simple as peace, love, joy, and happiness. Yes? Is that not something that all of you would like more of? Yes. So it's a simple formula. It's a very simple formula, but the brain overcomplicates things. The brain will create issues. The bra brain will create problems. The brain will create reasons. And the brain will create, create, create. And you all know where that goes, yes? It's a very deep rabbit hole. Whereas your soul self will simply be looking out for your well-being that works in conjunction with the well-being of everyone else on the planet. So it's a very harmonious and synergistic relationship that your higher self has with every other higher self out there. What creates the separation and the inequalities and the disharmony and the dysfunction on the planet is the idea of the ego that states I, 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 yes? Whereas the soul self doesn't understand that language. The soul self is strictly a we, 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 we scenario, while at the same time, your best interest is always in the forefront. So it seems contradictory, but from a non-physical, from an energetic standpoint, it's not at all. That's where harmony comes into play. That's where community comes into play. That's where the idea of a collective comes into play. So as you move through these times, you will find and you will experience, and many of you are experiencing this, for those of you who are, are, are considered to be empathic, you may struggle with this transition because there's pushback and there's fallout that comes with change, yes? And it's not always going to be smooth sailing. We understand that and we're not here to tell you that la di da di da di da it's all wonderful and beautiful. Because as a human being, it's not always that way. But how you choose to respond to situations can determine how strong, let's say, for lack of a better word, those dips and valleys are, yes? So when it comes to human emotions, many of you still do this, yes? These strong highs, these strong lows, sometimes in between, a strong high, a strong low, some, can you relate? The idea of balance and harmony and equilibrium is to create 
a, let's say, less, le to create in your life less fluctuation in those emotions. So in other words, the highs become less high and the lows become less low and you find yourself in a more balanced state the majority of the time because you're not allowing the compliments to elevate your ego and in turn you're not allowing let's say the less complimentary comments or actions by others take you into those depths of lows does this make sense mm -hmm. so we're not saying necessarily to relinquish the idea of emotion because at this stage in human evolution that is very much still a part of who you are. But what we are saying is that due to the transition that is happening and the spiritual evolution that's happening on the planet as a collective whole, the more you understand the impact on your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being of your emotional state, the better off you'll be because you'll have more balance and harmony and the more balance and harmony you have in your inner world, the more balance and harmony you will experience from your outer world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah.